Domestic Violence – The Intimate Bind Domestic violence affects both men and women across the globe, but where it affects one out of ten men, it affects three out of ten women. Surprisingly, you'll find that 70% of the abuse occurs after a partner leaves, and just because you can't see the bruises doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Due to personal reasons and the social stigma attached, this particular crime is known to be underreported by both sexes across the world, which means, therefore, that the numbers could be far higher than first presumed. As such, it's important to discuss, and as statistics clearly show that the ones that are abused are overwhelmingly women, makes sense to point the spotlight on that particular category. Domestic abuse can apply to anyone in an official or an intimate relationship and no country is immune, if figures are to be believed. It comes in many varieties and sometimes we find it hard to spot. Apart from the physical and verbal violation, it can also come in the way of mental, financial, sexual and cultural forms which one needs to be aware of before it's too late. Considering the seriousness of the situation, I thought I'd talk to Ruth Darlene, the founder and executive director of Women's SV, an institution that safeguards the right of every woman and child to be free in their own home. Ruth is based in Silicon Valley and has worked with thousands of women in abusive relationships who have come to her or have been referred. Even though she may be based elsewhere in the world, she feels that the story of domestic violence is the same across the globe. Identifying an abusive relationship The first question for me was to understand what an abusive relationship really looked like. Now, coming from a patriarchal setup myself, I think I may have been guilty of overlooking and accepting certain things myself. In doing so, does it mean I teach and carry down the same? A frightening thought. So what is an abusive relationship then? Well, Ruth describes violence in many forms, the most obvious being physical, but the more subtle forms where you see no bruises, the ones that are very, very difficult to spot. So the honeymoon period. You'll see this at the beginning of your relationship where your partner will try to woo you by being very attentive indeed. It will seem so romantic and why not? Don't we have the right to dream? You don't want to lose your faith in man, do you? But when, after around 30 days, or so it could be 15, you see something shift in the relationship, it's best not to ignore it. The red flags. The red flags are when he starts controlling pretty much everything around you and may start by simply, you know, by simply ordering for you, deciding what you should eat. Now, this may be pretty normal for a child, but to do this to an adult, something may just be amiss. Okay, so if you don't mind this and it doesn't seem so bad at this point, well, maybe you should be concerned when he now starts telling you what to wear. Chances are, not long after, he'll start calling you multiple times a day, which could mean something more sinister. Ruth does say that a lot depends on how you feel. If you think that you've reached a point where you need to start editing what you say in front of him, then, well, maybe things may not be as hunky-dory as you believe them to be. He will likely take over the relationship entirely. Finances will most likely be controlled first, and when you say something, he'll assure you that you've misunderstood everything and that you are imagining things. Now, this is what some of us would term as gaslighting. I would say before it blows up in your face to do something about it when the time is right. The profile of an abuser. They can all look great, charming and educated. You know, just like a good citizen, you may find them contributing to worthy causes and hold titles like lawyer, doctor, religious leader or even be in law enforcement. The absolute image of perfection which hides a dark side that lurks behind the mask. He will want and demand to be the centre of attention and want to win every argument and he will by whatever means. The attentive partner that initially cared about your every whim will suddenly lack empathy and remorse. A dark take on that guy who bought you flowers and chocolates to woo you a month ago. His strategy. Ruth Darlene warns that you have to be aware if your partner starts trying to get rid of all your friends and family because abuse thrives in secrecy, silence and isolation. He'll not want you to have any allies whatsoever so he can do what he likes to you. Be aware 
that he'll take away anything that could give you any independence at all. Remember, he needs you totally dependent to make his plans work, so don't be blind to reality. What steps you need to take? Well, from our conversation, our specialist suggests that there are three stages to leaving. The first, when you've been enlightened and you see your relationship for what it really is and leave in your mind. The second stage is when you actually physically leave your partner. Then the third time is when you exercise the demons that plague you when you have left. All that brainwashing that, that's been done to try and tell you that you will never survive alone needs to be overcome and you need to believe in yourself once again. Ruth is very serious when she says that when you reach the first stage that you need to keep it to yourself. It's crucial to not let the perpetrator know that you have found him out and you're onto him because your life could be in danger. And before you get to stage two, you need to make sure you gather some assets and allies. You need to make sure that you develop friendships and revive family relationships and update them about your situation all the time. It is crucial to re-engage with someone or a support group that understands your position by overcoming the social stigma that is attached to this issue, especially in the Indian cultural setting. Make sure you are prepared to leave without alerting your partner, otherwise he will stop you. Losing is not an option for him, so he'll try everything in his power to imprison you once again, even make you look crazy in the eye of the law. Reality check. It's amazing how that honeymoon period in a relationship where you were being looked after, protected and mollycoddled fast becomes a prison where you become controlled and dominated and sex, power and revenge become the driving force. No, it's not easy to leave, especially if you have children, but for your mental health becomes imperative. I did ask Ruth if there was ever a time when abuse was okay and the answer wasn't quite easy. She clearly says that it's a decision that you have to make if you think that the roof over your head and the food on the table is more important than your worth as an individual. Introspection. Remember, none of this stops with you but carries on through generations, so it's a decision that cannot be taken lightly. What's really funny about this all is that we all taught and brought up with certain values and have taken years to solidify them, yet it doesn't take a moment for someone to make you believe that you're unworthy and incapable. Reality is that something needs to change as Rekha Sharma from the National Commission for Women, the NCW, who receives calls of domestic violence from all parts of the country, has recorded a twofold increase during this pandemic where people have had to stay at home more. There's been a sharp rise in rape or attempted rape from 2 to 13 and where police have received, instead of 6 calls, 16. But the positive thing in this is that even though violence is increasing, the complaints are too. So do your part and stop the cycle of abuse. If you see any or suffer any signs of violence within a relationship, then call 721-77-35-35. 2 immediately whether you realize it or not there is always someone waiting in the wings to help you